Hello and welcome! Today we have a special video where I had the chance to work with Rufelmonger to get his take on an ideal fight stick layout that best conforms to how he likes to play. So we'll construct an all button controller with this new layout to see how everything turns out. An element of fight sticks which doesn't get addressed as much as it probably should is the button layout. Rufel started with a conventional all button layout and then made a variety of changes. Right off the bat you can see that the typical 8 action buttons have been reduced to 6 and have increased in size to the 30mm diameter sizes found in most arcade sticks. You'll also see that there are two smaller buttons taking up space between the movement functions and the normals. He also moved the original jump button position and added a second jump function. We talked about perhaps utilizing a spacebar for this area but in the end settled on dual buttons. More on some of the reasoning for the choices here in a bit. But while we're getting the build all together, let's take a look at other popular layouts to give this project a bit more context. There are several different kinds of layouts in the fight stick world, and even a few successful newer ones. But for better or worse, Vulix is often the default and backs up its status as the FGC standard with a 16 year reign. Vulix offers the player two more buttons beyond the straight six, another famous layout, which does make it more versatile across multiple games. But why is this still such a go-to layout in 2023? Even brand new offerings from major fight stick companies refuse to go beyond the Vulix standard. Don't get me wrong, I like it as much as the next player, but it's hard for me to understand why there has been such minimal ergonomic innovation all this time. Perhaps it's the least offensive option and ticks the most boxes for the average player and for the greatest number of games. But. What if you customized your own layout that ignored the averages and worked best for you specifically? There are lots of things to think about when it comes to crafting an ideal layout. Are your hands on the larger side? Do you have experience on traditional arcade sticks? Then you may want larger action buttons. Replacing the 24mm ones, which is a standard for hitbox inspired layouts with 30mm ones, might work best for you. Do you want more palm rest? Then consider orienting the button placement slightly higher. This Nightwalker case has much more palm room than a Marvelous Customs case for example. And if that's not something you care about, you can go the other direction. If you are using an all button controller, how do you center the controls? Around the jump function? Or around a specific action button? Do you need quicker access to a specific button? Looking at Street Fighter 6 specifically, Drive Impact stands out as a mechanic of note I'm not speaking at all about its balance, but an observer can watch the beta footage and see that understanding how to best utilize and adapt to drive impact will be paramount to being successful in Street Fighter 6. But where do you start with all this? You definitely don't need to reinvent the wheel. Look at already successful layouts and simply modify them to suit your needs. You don't have to be an expert on fight sticks, you are an expert on you. Where do your hands want to naturally rest? How does that position impact your wrists? How about your shoulders? Is there enough palm space? I usually go with Noir or Sega Player 2 as my starting point default layout, and then adjust as I go to accomplish the goals of that particular stick. This one for example was inspired by the cross up, but the size and orientation of the movement buttons was tweaked to better fit my style. Are there risks to all this? Well a hyper personalized layout may cost more money and might impact the resale value, but you're not going to get banned from a tournament by tweaking your button placement. One issue to keep in mind is how the new layout will affect the internals and where the components will fall. Will you still have enough space for the aux buttons or the new trick? Do you need to rethink the PCB placement? You may also need to reorient some side or back panel features. You can check out Slagcoin for various measurements and Focus Attack also has tons of PSD files for various layouts. Grab one you're interested in, print its buttonholes to scale, and then lay it on some cardboard. Let your hands naturally come to rest on the top. What are your impressions? Make some notes and repeat the process until you're satisfied. But after you've dialed in your perfect layout, how do you turn it from cardboard to reality? You can always cut it yourself if it's wood or similar material, provided you have the tools. If not, you can contact any number of the usual suspects in the custom fight stick enclosure scene and most are happy to accommodate you and your custom layout. If you have an all fight sticks case, you can also order custom cuts direct from them or top panel replacements from Send Cut Send. 
Regarding this particular build, I spoke with Ruffelmonger about potentially more optimal button layouts for SF6 to get his perspective. He's had many more opportunities to playtest the new Street Fighter game beyond just a recent open beta, so presumably has more informed insight as to what might work well for this game going forward. After some back and forth, we dialed in this layout for him. He uses his right thumb as the primary way to engage with the up button, but wanted both thumbs to be usable. Similarly, he wanted both jump functions to be curved inward to where he could naturally rest his thumbs. Regarding the drive impact function location, the thought process was that if we have to react immediately to it with a press of our own, then maybe we should take that burden off a less adept finger and orient this button in a spot that's easier for an index finger to monitor. And because every stick needs a splash of art, my buddy Creeps and Babes took my sketches and leaned into Rufal's sensibilities which we hoped would be on brand for him. All in all, I was pretty happy with how everything turned out, both aesthetically and regarding the new layout thought process. But why bother with ergonomics at all, you might ask? We've always used a Vulix or a straight six and that's always been good enough. Do we really need to start tweaking this stuff? To that, I say absolutely. Alex Myers and others have gone to extreme lengths to be able to continue playing the games they love after hand and wrist injuries. In fact, I dream of a future where each FGC major houses kiosks of that Dr. Scholl's inspired technology where your hands and wrists could be measured, the pressure points could be assessed, and the machine would spit out your ideal fight stick button layout. Okay, maybe not that far. But just like fighting games, we need to innovate or we plateau and die. And since the average FGC player is nearly pushing triple digits in the age department, maybe the occasional custom layout is justified. After all, a play session that isn't fatiguing or painful is a win. So, what's the verdict? Is this new Rufal layout the best for SF6? For everyone? Of course not. For him personally though, hopefully it fits like a glove. We used a Johnny phrase for the dub enclosure for this build, and you can order one with the same Rufal layout here. One of Johnny's own ergonomic designs, or, perhaps even better, a completely custom layout totally personalized to you. Hopefully you find what fits you well, even if it's a Vulix. Thanks to Rufalmonger for his help with the video, and thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the concept, and let us know your favorite layout in the comments below. Support your locals, and I'll see you all in SF6.